In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can instantly improve your mixes with one simple skill. In fact, any mixing knowledge you already have may actually be hurting your music compared to this skill, and I'm gonna prove it to you. So firstly, let's listen to two versions of the same track. Hear how much better that second version sounded? And guess what? It hasn't even been mixed at all. Over the past eight years, I've coached literally thousands of producers and without fail, this is the one skill that makes the biggest difference to their mixes. They'll usually focus on things like EQ, compression, reverb, even some more advanced mixing techniques like bussing, dynamic EQ, multiband compression, but inevitably within a couple of minutes, we can get their mix sounding way better without any of that stuff. Have you guessed what the skill is yet? It's sound selection. Not even sound design, sound selection, which is basically picking the right sounds for the right genre that are going to work with the other sounds that you've already got in your track. If you get it wrong, as you know, mixing is incredibly frustrating and difficult, but if you get it right, mixing almost kind of takes care of itself. But it's not just about the mix, it actually affects every aspect of your track. If you pick the wrong sounds, it can completely change the vibe of your track, and any great track has a very strong vibe or theme. So let's look at the biggest struggles when it comes to sound selection, and then we're going to look at some solutions as to how you can get better at it. So the three biggest problems are as follows. One, too much choice. You know what it's like to have thousands of sample and preset packs out there, probably thousands on your actual computer. How do you actually start picking the right one when there's so much choice out there? That's the first thing we'll look at. The second point is not knowing which sounds fit the vibe of your track and genre. So we'll look at that too. And the third problem is not knowing which sounds are gonna work well with the sounds that you've already got within your track. Because everything has to gel together, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So here are the solutions that we teach in the Accelerator program which have helped our students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels. Okay boom let's do it. So the first issue that we've already touched upon is the fact there's so much choice out there. How do you even begin to sift through all the samples and presets? Well, the first thing I would suggest is choosing your genre and then downloading a few reference tracks that are hyper focused on that genre because that's going to help you work out which sounds are going to work well for that genre. Now if you're in your first year of producing of course you're going to want to expect experiment with different genres but even so for every track that you produce downloading a reference track is really going to help you decide what kind of sounds should be in that genre one of the biggest mistakes i see producers making is not focusing in on a specific genre that they want to produce and trying to be too original too early we need to learn by listening to what's already there trying to get sounds that are going to work for that genre and it just makes that job way more easier but once you've done that then it's a case of selecting just a couple of sample packs or pre preset packs that are going to work well for your genre that are really high quality. And once you've found just one or two sample packs, they can actually last you for years. Now I've actually put together my 15 most used kicks that I've compiled over the past 25 years. So you can download those free using the link below this video and use them in your own tracks. I downloaded some Vengeance drum packs about 10 years ago and I'm still using some of them. So where do you even start to find these high quality sample and presets packs? Well, there's a few websites that you can check out like Loop Masters, Splice, ADSR, Prime Loops, or just do a Google search for high quality sample and preset packs. Another pretty simple option is to just look up your favorite music producers creating music in the style that you want and see if they've released any personal sample or preset packs. Many sites even offer free sample packs, so that can be a great way to get your collection started because I've personally found that the samples that you get included with Ableton or FL Studio aren't as good as quality third party packs, predominantly because the third party packs are just focused focused on making the best sample and preset packs possible. You can also get involved with online communities like over at EDM Tips or on Reddit or different Facebook groups or Discords and just get into discussions with other producers about quality sample packs for the specific genre that you're producing. Now it's easy to get lost in the vast amount of sample packs out there which is why I recommend focusing on a specific genre, listen to the demos of the sample and preset packs before you buy or download them and just try and actively limit yourself as it can be an endless rabbit hole. Now, next really important tip is to actually organize your samples. So let's go into my Ableton project at the moment and you can see I've actually spent the time organizing these different samples. Now, how you do it, is gonna vary on what works for you, but these are some different categories that I found really help. So I've got bass, I've got brass, I've got drum hits, which are then split out into separate ones. And yes, of course, you could just keep your sample packs downloaded in their separate categories, 
as the producers have created them, but I like to spend the time actually splitting them out into these different categories that make more sense for me. I actually have these as different physical folders on my hard drive, and I will literally just drag and drop those samples into those specific folders. Now, when it comes to organizing synth presets or patches, that's a bit trickier because each synth will obviously have their own collections. So all I do is organize them within the synth bank themselves. If you're using Ableton though, you can actually go one step further and create an instrument rack with the patch that you really like and then you can save that as an Ableton instrument rack which can help with organization. I don't really bother to do that. I'll just use the tags and favorites of whatever synth browser system I'm using. Again, it's just about finding a system of organization that works and makes sense for you. Now you might spend four or five hours doing this but it really is a stitch in time because once these are organized you're going to be adding to them over time and these sample categorizations will be with you for the next 10-15 years. So it's really worth spending the time organizing them in this way. Okay, so my next tip, you've got your genre, you've got your reference tracks, you've organized your samples from a couple of select sample packs. So the next stage is the actual production. So what I recommend is just focusing on the core three or four sounds first. If you think of a song, there might be 90 to 100 different tracks when you factor in all the layers and effects as well. But unless you get those core three or four sounds right first, none of the other sounds actually matter. So for dance music, that would usually be the kick, the bass, maybe the main clap or snare, and then of course the main lead synth or vocal. There might be four, five, six different sounds that constitute that core idea. And using your reference tracks to help decide what those core sounds should be is a massive time saver. Now out of all these core sounds, the kick and the bass are the most important for dance music. We've got more on that in a couple of minutes. Okay, so how do you actually pick those core sounds? So here's what I suggest doing and that is using hot swapping. I do it in Ableton but you can do it in most doors. Just look up how to do it. But being able to preview and listen to sounds in situ whilst the other sounds are playing is absolutely essential. Because a sound that sounds good on its own doesn't mean anything if it's not working with your core sounds. And if you're starting with the most important sounds first and working down this order of hierarchy, you're going to be able to preview the sounds that are going to work with your core sounds and make the best decision each time. Now I actually use post-it notes for this, like that, and as I preview sounds I will literally make a note on my post-it note for each sound I like and then I will A, B compare one sound against another and then just cross out the worst of those two sounds and I will whittle down maybe seven or eight sound selections for each sound in the mix until I find the one that's absolutely strongest. So here's an example of me actually doing that. Let's jump into the door and get it done. So I've got this track, I've got the main sounds in, I've got the kick, I've got the bass and I've got the vocals and it sounds a bit like this. So I need to now find new sounds that already work with these core sounds that we worked out. So one thing I do on this track, because I'm using reference tracks, is a piano. Now this is where sound selection gets a bit easier. If you do your research and you know a little bit about particular genres, you can do things like look up a classic sound for that particular genre. So for Piano House, I'm going to use the Korg M1 Piano. That's all I need to know. And then I don't need to spend hours selecting a piano sound because I know it needs to sound like this. And it works, right? But now let's look at using this technique that we just talked about. So I want to find some drums. So I'm going to go in there and I will usually program in the drums with any sound. It doesn't matter which sound really, as long as it's of that variety. So an open hat, a clap, they're going to be the main sounds if you're making this genre of music. But again, you want to check depending on the genre. Hit this hot swap button here. And then we can go to our sample bank. Let's say drum hits, hi-hats open. And then we can just listen to some hats. But the beauty of this is now we can actually preview them whilst all our core sounds are playing. So I'm just going to turn off this little preview button here because I only actually want to hear them when I've loaded them in by pressing return. But let's just listen to the drums, loop it round. And then just listen to a few open hats. Okay, that one's quite cool. Now, I know it's a shaker, but I quite like the sound. It gels with the core sound. So all I'm going to do is make a note of that. One, six, nine. And then I'm going to repeat that process four or five times. Yeah, I like that. One, five, eight. I like that. I like that one. One, oh, eight. And I like that. 
Okay, so now I have a list of five different open hat options. What I'm going to do is just listen to one, then the other of each of them, and then cross out the one that I like least. So here we've got 169 and 158. So we go to 169, let's listen to it, and then we're going to drop 158 in and compare it. Okay, so out of those two, I prefer 169, so I'm just going to get rid of 158. And now we're going to pit them against each other. So we've got 169 has won that battle. Now we're going to go to 169 versus 151. So let's try that again. 151. I like that for an open hat. So in this instance, 151 has won the battle. And then so on we go, whittling it down until we're left with the one open hat sound that we like the most. And as I say, I will do this for literally every sound in the track. Yes, it's time consuming, but I guarantee that your end result is going to sound way better rather than trying to fix it in the mix. Okay, so what happens when you stumble across a sound that sounds amazing, but it's not going to fit your vibe and it's got nothing to do with the reference tracks you've downloaded? What do you do in this situation? For example, if you're producing a deep house track, but you find this amazing arpeggio, but it sounds really trying. Well, I used to say kill your kittens, which is, that's a horrible phrase really, but it basically means getting rid of ideas that are good and that you like, but they aren't right for your track. Now I've now changed this from kill your kittens to just throw your kittens in a dungeon, which is if anything, that might actually be worse, mightn't it? But anyway, the idea is if you stumble across a sound that you think sounds really good, but you know it's not right for your track, just save that project. At least then you think that you'll go back to it, but you probably actually won't. And then you can continue with your main project and your main vibe, happy in the knowledge that your kitten is languishing happily with catnip and everything, but in a dungeon. So again, let's look at a quick example of that. Okay, let's find an arpeggio that works for this. I'm just going to use Spire for this. Hit it on, choose Sequence and Arp. Again, we can use the same technique we just looked at. No. 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 So that sounds really good, but it's not going to fit in with my Deep House vibe. So what I'm going to do then is just save this out and I'm just going to call it trance riff and then load back in the project I was just working on and focus back on the deep house much better Okay, one of the other things that we see each week in Tuneful Tuesday in the EDM Tips community is that people get the layering wrong. They will layer up so many sounds to try and get a good sound, but in my experience, fewer layers selected more carefully is way better than just throwing in a bunch of layers trying to get this huge sound. If you can't get the sound that you want in just three layers, then it's probably time to look at each of those layers and pick a sound that is gonna work better. And that's all very well, but then how do you actually choose sounds that work together well when layering well there are three or four i would say main components to each sound you've got the frequencies you've got the transient shape of it so how fast the attack is how fast the decay is and you've got the overall timbre of that sound and of course we need all of those things to complement each other to work out good layers once again though you can use that hierarchical technique of choosing the most important layer first then previewing other sounds until you find one that works well with your layer so time for the example <laughs> In this track, I'm creating a future rave, hard trance type track with Armin Van Buren, and I wanted to have that future rave classic lead sound. So this is my kick and bass, two of my core sounds. And I know from listening to my reference tracks that I need a future rave riff that's gonna work with this kick and bass. So first thing I'm gonna do is add that future rave riff just with a basic saw wave, which is gonna give me the sound I want, like this. And then the next most important thing to do is determine what needs doing before you just start randomly searching for samples or presets to layer up. And I need this to have a little bit more bite. So what I'm doing is adding another synth and just adding a white noise oscillator. And that's going to add some bite. Okay, now I want more mid-range body in this. So I'm going to create a serum. And then this is where I can just search through some different presets. So again, I can just write my list as I'm going through them. So let's try some. Okay, that one's okay. That's my camel fat lead. Let's 
try another. Dead Mouse one doesn't sound good. Flaming good sounds good. Ah, but Armin Aggressive is my favorite one. And again, you can just A, B test and whittle down to your favorite one. But the important point here, I'm limiting my layers to three and I'm trying to determine everything I need before I start randomly throwing on eight different layers. Okay, my next tip is to ignore the mix, at least at first, and just focus on selecting sounds that work well together. Okay, you might use a little bit of low cut EQ to get out the bass if you don't want the bass in the sound, but over and above that, just ignore all of the other mixing techniques like surgical EQ, compression, reverb. If you invest this time in selecting the right sounds and composing your track properly, all of that other stuff is way easier. Now, of course, all of this gets easier with practice and it can really help to have someone break this down for you if you have a question about the sound in a particular track. And that's exactly what we do twice a week, every single week in the Accelerator program. We jump on live calls together. You can ask, how does such and such producer make this sound? Or how do I select a sound that works well with this? And we will literally break down every process of either finding or creating that sound from scratch and more importantly we break down the entire thought process behind it so you can select sounds that are going to work for your tracks every single time. So if you follow each of these steps instead of focusing on the mixing I guarantee that your end mix will end up sounding better even though you're not doing any mixing. But as I mentioned before nailing the kick and the bass is probably the most important sound selection part of this process which can make or break a track. So many times I'm working with a producer and they'll give me a track that's pretty much almost finished but it's just not quite working. We'll switch out the kick or the bass sound and suddenly the entire track is transformed. But thankfully it doesn't need to be that complicated and it all starts with selecting the exact right kick for your track. Now I've put together exactly how I do that in this video here. Once again this is exactly what we teach our Accelerator students and that's why they've been able to release on labels such as Armada and Juna Beat, Spinning. It works for me, it works for them, so it can work for you too. There's just a few steps to it but nailing this will make every single track you produce better. So I will catch you over at that next video.